Hello dear friends and welcome to part 2 of my tutorial for creating an interactive and animated fantasy map using Dungeon Draft and Foundry Virtual Tabletop. A tutorial I decided to split into two parts to allow me to focus on each individual piece of software separately for users who are only interested in getting information on one of the two. In the first part of the tutorial, I showed you how to create your own isometric fancy map using my art and dungeon drafts. And in the second part, I'll show you how to animate that map for people who use my assets and then how to bring it to life using some amazing free modules that allow us to make it a lot more interactive for both the dungeon master and the player. I'll also add in markers in the timeline to make it even easier to locate the highlights of each of these modules. Now, for this module, I'm not going to start from scratch as it um, does contain quite a few animated objects and I'd like to refrain from putting them all into place, but I will show you how to import the whole thing from scratch including dropping in some animations to show you how that is done exactly. First, we move to our scenes, where we would start by creating a new scene for our animated map. We give the scene a name, and if you'd like, you could give your scene a separate navigation name for your players, in case you want them to keep the location in case you want to keep the location secret. Next, we pick our background image, the map I showed you at the end of my last video, entering its exact dimensions to make it to scale. Uh, then we pick a grid type, I chose hexagons to test out some isometric features here, but you might as well choose gridless if you're not using tokens in this map. For vision and lighting, I have token vision and fog off. It's not that kind of a map, and global illumination to make sure players can actually see what's going on. Perfectionists can even change the initial view position, making sure players take in exactly what you'd like them to upon first entering the map. Now, let's move on onto adding in the animated elements that bring the map to life. Like the blades of my windmill here. So. Let's head on down to the tile editor and browse the WebM animated images we'll be using for this specific map. Just like the Dungeon Draft assets, these assets are marked by CHR for crosshead region maps, making it easy to find what exactly you're looking for when navigating the browser. Dragging and dropping in these animations is a piece of cake as well, as you'll notice right here. Currently, every animation you'll dr see drop in will be in sync, something that I hope will be updated in the next version of Foundry, uh, I believe, but there is enough variation to make sure that no one notices that this is the case. The smoke animation, for instance, has three variations. Just zoom in when placing it, and use the shift key while moving the tile to make sure we can get the smoke trail right above our chimney here. Wonderful. Time for a little interlude here, as I forgot to add in an important part of animating our snow map, and that is add in, adding in the weather effect of the snow itself. This one is really simple, and most users of Foundry will probably skip this part. But hey, I wanted to include it, or make sure I include it, each step for novice users as well. Now. Let's head on down to the effect controls for this, uh, go to weather controls, and add in snowstorm. I like the direction of my snow to move from west to east, so let's put it at 28, scaling it to make sure, scaling it down a heap to make sure it scales, um, it's, it's up to the scale of my zoomed out map here. Click, click uh, save changes, and voila, snow. Now, let's get back to the original video without the weather effect turned on. Um, we Now we're going to be taking a look at the macros I have in place for changing our map from night to day with the click of a button. 
Those of you with keen eyes will notice that not only does the lighting change, there are also animations like our campfires here that turn off in the day map and turn on in the night version. It's, a small, feature, it's small features like these that are just lovely to play around with and give us a lot of flexibility in building unique variations. Opening up the macro of our day button, you'll see the two main functions being executed when it's clicked. The first of those Two is one that tells our canvas to change the darkness in the scene from whatever it is currently to zero. Looking at our scene settings, you'll see that this function refers to the darkness level slider we can manually operate right here. The next function tells Foundry to go look for a specific tile referred to by its ID here and to update its status from whatever it is currently to hidden and to lock it. This is just something I do to make sure I don't accidentally delete the tile. For those of you who would like to know how to figure out what the idea of a tile is, we simply need to press F12 to open the console and when we place a new tile into our scene, the console will tell us what the idea of that tile is. Copy the number and paste it into the area of the function where it references the idea between, between the two brackets. Deleting and undoing the deletion of a tile also helps you figure out the idea of a tile if you've already placed it and would like to figure out what it is. Then we just copy paste that piece of code for each new tile we'd like to change the vis visibility of when the macro is activated now, we copy this entire function from our day uh, macro to our night macro and simply change all the hidden is true part of the code to hidden is false as we reveal the fires and smoke coming from our bonfires at night. Once we've got all our animations and macros in place, it's time to add some sweet, sweet interactive elements to our map. Elements that make our life as a dungeon master a lot easier during gameplay, but also give players some room to play around with the map themselves. Let's go take a look at the wonderful modules we have installed to make this all happen. Six modules currently active. Let's start with the point of interest sheet first. What this module does is it turns actor sheets and their tokens into points of interest sheets. Meaning that when I create a new actor, I don't only have the option to fill in a stat block for my characters, but also makes it uh, possible to use this sheet as a journal entry. Instead of using the custom 5th edition character sheet in the options, I select the 5th edition point of interest sheet as my default sheet and voila! Now all I have to do is change the tokens to a blank PNG, go into the prototype token options so I can have its name displayed without it being visible itself. Now in my original example I chose the option to have it only active on hover so my map remains clean. But in this example, let's uh, set it to always visible for everyone. And finally, we can change the units to make it, them overlap whatever part of the illustration I needed to cover. 2x2 two two should work uh, for most, most of the buildings I use in this example. Uh, while I was putting down a token, some of you might have noticed some options that aren't available in the standard version of Foundry Virtual Tabletop, a perfect time to move on to the next module in this tutorial. Custom and Nameplates What Custom Nameplates does is it allows us to go into settings here, uh, moving on to the module settings to be exact, and find the global settings that allows us to change the font of all the tokens in our world. I, pre I prefer to be able to fine-tune as much as possible, and being able to change the font family and scale of all my tokens is just wonderful. Next up, keen observers might have already noticed, 
But you'll see that not only has the font changed on my map here, but all the borders or boxes of my tokens have also been removed in this scene. A mo module called Border Control allows me to toggle the border of each token placed on my map, on or off, making sure that when people hover over them or select them, that they can still show the name of a button, but not the bounding box around them. Uh, finally, we move on to my favorite of all these modules, the infamous module known as Trigger Happy. The one module that allows us to have our players interact with the map we've just created and allows us to give them freedom to navigate their surroundings in real time. Like I did on this map, linking my gatehouse uh, on my town map to my gatehouse battle map right here. What's so wonderful about Trigger Happy is that it is user is super user friendly to use. All you have to do is head down to the journal directory, create a folder called Trigger Happy and a journal entry inside said folder called Triggers. This journal entry now becomes the place to be for linking all the triggers we'd like players to play around with. And as you can see in this pre-made example here, is that all you have to do is link an actor, my point of interest token, to a scene. If that doesn't make any sense to you, let me show you how it works, because it's easy as pie. First, we head on down to our actor directory, where we create a new point of interest, uh, we'll call it forest. We go through the motions of changing the images, blowing up the scale of our invisible token. Uh, this one is a forest, so it'll be a tad bigger than our previous token. Let's start with 6x6 here. Um, and then we drag it on top of our scene to where we want the trigger to be located. We'll just uh, adjust the size somewhat here. Let's go with 8x8, uh, turn off the bounding box, and we've got our trigger set. Now, it's time to show you the magic that is trigger happy and return back to our journal entries for the triggers. All we have to do here is open the journal entry make a new line for our forest trigger, go to the actor directory, and drag and drop the forest actor into our triggers. And then we'll go to the scene directory to add in our scene. We'll go with the forest road here, just dragging and dropping it right next to our actor and you can save the entry. That's all you have to do. Don't have to write a single line of code to make this work. Magnificent, ain't it? Now, we just pop into our world as a player instead and playtest this new trigger ourselves. Head on down to the forest here where you'll see my cursor turns into a hand and click to activate, allowing our players to pop right into the forest if they're chasing, if they're chasing down any routing enemies that ran away after the siege on the town walls. Well, I think that about wraps it up for the second chapter, or the second part of this tutorial. As I've mentioned before, you'll find all the assets I used in this tutorial on my Patreon. I have both my isometric assets and my top-down assets available for all patrons starting at the $5 tier. This module, however, with all its animated maps, triggers, tokens, and the adventure that comes with it is, avail is available for free. So you can check out the code for yourself, playtest it, and I hope it helps you in building an adventure like this of your own. Thanks for watching and see you next time.